If you're new to computers and you already decided that you want to build your own PC, like pre builts are not for you, you want to do it yourself and build it yourself, then listen up because I'm going to walk you through the whole process starting with the parts. Hey everyone, I'm Danny. Welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. So where do we start? The first thing you need to do is set yourself a budget. Decide on a number and then stick with it, or as close as you think you can. I like to group budgets into three major categories. The first group is the under $1,000 category. I like to call this the budget builds. This is for beginners and people who are not sure if they want to be a PC gamer yet. It gives you the smallest risk and investment and allows you to game at decent frame rates. The second category is for the mid-tier gamer. It's under $2,000, and I would say it's my recommendation for most people. You won't need to upgrade for a few years, and you'll be able to play on high settings and high resolutions right away. The third group is the high end. This is the $3,000 and up tier, and it's really for the PC master race individuals, the ones that have to have the best, and they can't settle for anything less. If you put yourself into a budget category, that can give you an estimate of what parts you'll need to be shopping for. Speaking of, let's talk about what parts you'll need to make this computer a reality. PC Part Picker should be your first stop. In case you've never heard of it, PC Part Picker is the premier website to put together your PC. They have build guides which cover systems based on a variety of use cases and budgets. You can also select PC Builder at the top to start your own build from scratch. From here, you select each component. It'll bring you to a list so you can choose an item, add it to your build, and it also lists the current best price for each. There are a few things you'll need to build your PC, and you can look to PC Part Picker for a cheat sheet of this list. The first thing on the list is the CPU. You really only have two choices for this. It's either AMD or Intel. I made a video to help decide between the two if you're not sure, and I'll leave it up top. Second thing on the list is the CPU cooler. Some budget CPUs will come with one. The Ryzen 5s or the APUs, which is CPUs with a G-series designator, they come with coolers. And for Intel, the i3, i5, and i7s, unless you get a K-series SKU, in which case those don't come with one either. The CPU cooler is just a big piece of aluminum. Sometimes they have a copper core to it, and it dissipates heat away from the CPU and blows it out into the case. Next thing on the list is the motherboard. I'm not going to go into all the specifics about the motherboards and the numbers and naming schemes, just know that both AMD and Intel have a B-series designator to identify their budget series boards. Most of you would be just fine with that. If you need the high-end stuff, AMD uses an X to designate their top end, and Intel uses a Z to designate their top end. Pretty easy, right? Well, now it gets more complicated with memory. You used to only have one choice when building a new computer, and that was DDR4. Well, DDR5 has just entered the scene. Currently, Intel are the only ones using DDR5, but AMD is planning on bringing DDR5 to their motherboards this fall in 2022. So if you're watching it later on in the year or maybe into 2023, it's probably already out. The performance increase for DDR5 isn't anything to write home about, especially not for the price premium it currently demands. I'd stick with DDR4. Whatever you choose, the motherboard will designate what kind of RAM you need. So when you're looking at the motherboard, verify if it says DDR4 or DDR5, because if it's a DDR5 board, it will only work with DDR5 RAM and vice versa. Next thing on the list is storage, and you're going to need a lot of it if you plan on playing a bunch of different games. There are three major types of storage. The old-fashioned type is hard disk drive or HDD. These are old spinning drives. Their size per dollar cannot be beat. If you need a large capacity drive like four terabytes or bigger, this is your best option. One of the newer options to come onto the market in the past few years or so is solid state drives. I'm sure everyone's heard about it. Solid state drives are much faster than hard disk drives, but they cost a lot more as well for the amount of storage that you get. That's why I said if you need a big storage drive, go with the hard disk drive. If you're good for like a terabyte or less, the solid state drive is your way to go. Now there's a new option that has hit the market over the past few years, that is NVMe. It's still a solid state drive, it's just smaller, it looks like a stick of gum. What it does is it connects to the motherboard and that's your power and your interface instead of just connecting through a SATA cable and then having to power it off of the power supply. So it eliminates cable clutter, it's a faster connection to the motherboard, and it's smaller. Now prices have started coming down on NVMe drives, they used to be a lot more expensive. 
but in fact, you can get an NVMe storage drive for the same price as a 2.5 SSD. So I wouldn't even recommend buying these anymore. I would just go with the NVMe storage drive for all of your storage needs. The next thing to look for is the case. This is really up to your preference. There's four common sizes. They are ATX full, ATX mid, micro ATX, and mini ITX. Whatever you choose, make sure you go with the same size motherboard as the case you're choosing, because it'll look kind of funny if you pick a small motherboard in a giant case and flip-flop that. If you pick a big motherboard and you buy a small case expecting to put it in there, it's not gonna fit. So do your research before buying. The next component is the power supply. You just need enough power to run all the components that you picked for your PC. Power supplies have different types of ratings. You wanna try to get 80 plus bronze or 80 plus gold. It's really not gonna make a difference, especially if this is your first time building a PC, you're not gonna notice between bronze and gold. You'll mainly be picking a power supply, the wattage number, based on the parts that you put into the PC, the CPU and the GPU specifically. The best bet is to go to the manufacturer's website of the card that you're shopping for and look up that specific card's specs. You can usually do a drop down on their specs menu and it will identify what they recommend for a power supply. For ASUS, if you're looking at their graphics cards or anything, they've actually got like a power supply generator number and you can type in what CPU and what GPU you wanna to pair together and they will tell you what size power supply you should be getting. So I thought that was kinda of neat. And you tell it if you're gonna be overclocking or not. The last and the most important part is the graphics card. There are two major choices currently, AMD or Nvidia. Nvidia is the most popular and AMD provides the best price versus the best performance. Also, there is a third company that's trying to squeeze their way into the market and that's Intel. They are currently in work building their own dedicated GPUs. As of the time of this filming, they're not out yet and nobody knows when they're gonna be out. So I can't recommend them if I don't know what they'll do. These are the minimum components you need when building a gaming PC. Now you can skip the GPU if you're not gonna be building a gaming PC. If you just wanna build a regular computer and all you wanna do is surf the web and stuff, you can build a PC without a graphics card. However, it needs to have integrated graphics built onto the CPU or you need to get an APU from AMD, which has the graphics on the chip as well. Almost all AMD CPUs do not have integrated graphics currently. So you'll have to get something with the G series designator. Otherwise you're not going to have any video signal for Intel. They have very specific designators. All of their CPUs can display graphics. If that has an F at the end of the CPU, it will not display graphics. There is no integrated graphics on the chip. Just a little FYI. One of the benefits of using PC Part Picker for your components is there's a couple little options at the top of the page that help you out and make it even easier when building your PC. The first thing is every build you do will get a build list link. At the top of the page, it gives a little link that you can copy and you can put it on your Facebook, your social media, you can send it to friends and family in a text message, whatever you wanna do, they can then click that link and it'll bring them to this very page that'll show them what you're trying to build. And if it's someone that's into computers or knows a little bit about computers more than you, they can give you tips and advice on what you should change for your PC. Now, if you want suggestions with your build, Danny's tech channel has a discord you might want to check out. Our community would gladly give you advice to save money or gain performance for your upcoming build. Click the link below to stop by. Another cool feature with PC Part Picker is the compatibility checker. It will identify if there's problems with compatibility. If you put the wrong CPU with the wrong motherboard, that's your main concern. Most GPUs nowadays will work with any motherboard, but not all CPUs and GPUs will work together. And now not all RAM will work together either. So the compatibility viewer will tell you if you've picked parts that are incompatible. There's one small problem I noticed when you pick a motherboard and a CPU, the X570 and B550 motherboards were released before Ryzen 5000 CPUs came out, and some BIOS were not updated to handle them at that time. That's why it shows upgrading the BIOS may be necessary. This isn't really a concern anymore since Ryzen 7000 comes out at the end of this year, so all of the motherboards are updated at this time. The last cool thing on the site is the estimated wattage block. This thing adds all the parts power usage together and displays it on the blue wattage block. It's really useful for giving you an idea of what kind of power supply you're gonna need for this system. Always estimate a little bit higher than what's displayed because it's just gonna show you the power draw, not what you should actually be checking. So I usually give it about a 25 to 30% bump above 
what it's showing your power usage is gonna be, and you'll be fine. Now that I outlined the parts for you, you're probably wondering, where's some good places to shop? Amazon is obviously the easiest and most popular place for PC parts. It's not always the cheapest. In fact, it's usually not. It is easy to navigate and you get pretty much next day shipping on almost every item. So that's always a plus. The place I like to shop is Newegg. They are a huge online electronics store. If you've never heard of them, they offer PC parts, components, TVs, networking, drones, pretty much anything electronic you could want. Most times they have the best deals. They have a large stock and a big variety of items. Best Buy is another option if you want that in-store experience. They do have you know, CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, they've got all your choices. However, they've got a very small selection and their prices are not always the best. The one good thing is they do match prices with Amazon. They will not match Newegg prices. They used to, they stopped doing that, at least in my local area, but they will match Amazon prices. So if you find it for a better deal on Amazon, you just show them in the store. It has to match the SKU though. So make sure that it is the same part. You just show the Best Buy associate and they'll give you the price that's advertised on Amazon. If you want to pick it up in store, that is. The last place I want to recommend is Micro Center. They have the absolute best prices, but they're in store only. Another problem they have is their limited stores. There's only 25 locations and they are only in the United States. PC Part Picker will show you all the places the item is available if you click the title link directly. Now, they don't have a shopping cart function or any way to actually purchase the parts. It simply links you to their affiliate link code on Amazon or whatever site has the best price at the time. So you might as well just use my affiliate links down below and support all my hard work making this video. I know this sounds like a PC part picker advertisement video, but it's really not. I'm just giving you the basic information. If you're new to PC building and you've never built before, this is your best bet because it's so simple to use. You just click a bunch of buttons, you add things to your cart, it shows you the total cost, and it compatibility checks all the parts. Oh, I almost forgot. When you build your PC, you're gonna need a Windows license. Do not look up a Windows license on PC Part Picker. If you click the button that says an operating system, it will direct you to Amazon, which will want you to buy a $110 Windows license. You don't need that. There are sites that sell genuine Windows 10 licenses for super cheap. I'm talking as cheap as $10. I like to use SCD key. I've been buying keys from this site for years now and have never had an issue with them deactivating or not working. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you need one. I've been wanting to make a build guide for a very long time and now I finally did it. This is the first step you need to take to building your own PC. I'll make a few more videos of how to build the PC and what to do after building the PC, but that takes time and money and time. So if you enjoyed the content, give it a like down below and subscribe so you can come back and check out those videos when they finally go live. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Sunny day, sunny day, sunny day,